Recently, I made a video on how St. Thomas Aquinas refuted the errors of Muhammad in Islam, and I quoted various passages which Aquinas may have used to demonstrate Islam's errors. Not too long after, the Islamic or Muslim YouTuber Saiftalk made a response or rebuttal video to mine. Now, before we talk about where Saif goes wrong in his video, I want to talk about the logical fallacy titled a Tukul Quay fallacy that is sometimes mistakenly used in argumentation, and if used, makes your argument's reasoning invalid. Merriam-Webster defines this logical fallacy as such. A retort charging an adversary with being or doing what the adversary criticizes in others. It also states, a typical Tukul Quay involves charging your accuser with whatever it is you've been just accused of, rather than refuting the truth of the accusation. To give an example, if I make an objection against your position, and you state that I also believe in the same thing, my objection still stands. You appealing to my beliefs that might be similar or the same to yours has no bearing on the objection being put forward. Saif Talk commits so many Tuku Kwe fallacies and many other types of fallacies in this rebuttal video of his that I thought it necessary to put a fallacy counter at the top of the screen, which will display how many times he commits a fallacy throughout the video. Aquinas tried to refute Islam but failed miserably. He didn't speak about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the concept of God in Islam. His arguments against Islam were emotional and frankly stupid. Alfred Guillaume, who was a British Christian Arabist, was a scholar of the Hebrew Bible, the Old Testament, said in Christian and Muslim theology as represented by a Shahrasani and St. Thomas Aquinas. Though none was better equipped than St. Thomas to undertake an exposition of the Catholic faith, it is, I think, clear that he felt himself at a disadvantage in writing against people whose books he could not read and of whom he knew only from the translations of others. He obviously had had no similar knowledge of Muhammadans. A work written under such conditions is likely to be gravely deficient. Alfred Guillaume knew that Thomas Aquinas was ignorant about Islam and his arguments were gravely deficient. This objection seems to be a straw man of what Thomas Aquinas is arguing and therefore a straw man fallacy. As Professor David Burrell notes, he is not responding directly to a Muslim interlocutor as he has already professed his ignorance of the particulars of the Muslim faith in the just completed Summa. So yes I agree, Aquinas did not have some insane scholarly knowledge on the particular beliefs of Islam, but he nonetheless was quite familiar with the basic teachings of Islam, and it is the basic teachings, not the specific or particular beliefs, which Aquinas refutes. It is these basic claims of Islam that are all that is needed to refute it. So Islam is false because in Islam it is allowed to have relations with your female servants. Is this really a valid argument? Of course not. If Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a false prophet, then Abraham alayhi sallam is also a false prophet for doing exactly the same thing according to the Bible. Genesis 16 verse 2 So she said to Abraham, The Lord has kept me from having children. Go sleep with my slave. Perhaps I can build a family through her. Abraham agreed to what Sarah said. I don't care if you believe this is a sin or not. Is Abraham alayhi salam a true prophet of God or not? If he's still a prophet even after having sexual relations with his female servant, then the argument of Thomas Aquinas falls apart. In this next clip, Saif Talk is responding to an argument from Aquinas in which Muhammad gained followers quickly by pushing forward the allowance of various lustful desires, such as having sexual intercourse with as many slave women that a Muslim may have. This is the first too cool quay fallacy in the video, as instead of refuting the objection at hand, he argues that we Christians also believe Abraham had intercourse with a slave, similar to what Islam allows. Furthermore, in committing a too cool quay fallacy and appealing to the Bible, he commits another fallacy known as the equivocation fallacy. This is evident from the fact that we don't view the prophets and kings in the Old Testament as moral standards in themselves. For example, Abraham himself sinned when he lied to the Pharaoh about his wife simply being his sister. So our moral standards come not from men who are corrupted in sin, but from God himself who also became incarnate in Christ Jesus. 
he is the only perfect moral standard to which we follow. This is different from Muhammad, who espoused these lustful teachings and yet is at the same time a moral guide for Muslims for all ages. The majority of Christians who wrote against Islam base their claims on emotional arguments. An appeal to emotion fallacy occurs when an audience is pressured to accept a poorly supported conclusion based on evocative imagery or emotionally charged language. This argument from Aquinas is not an appeal to emotion. It's a moral critique of what Muhammad and Islam teaches, that a Muslim can have intercourse with as many slave women that they may have. Aquinas argues that Muhammad developed followers quickly from carnal and lustful pleasures that he espoused. Aquinas tried to argue that the companions of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, only followed him for lustful pleasures. Let me get this straight. You want us to believe that people who didn't even believe in something called adultery or fornication and believed women were their property accepted Islam for lustful pleasures? Are you okay? Islam limited marriage to only four wives. But before Islam, there was no limit. Islam prohibits alcohol and many other pleasures that they were enjoying. But for some reason, having relations with female captives is why they accepted Islam. I'm sorry, but your argument doesn't make any sense. Islam came to set boundaries and limit their pleasures. Praying five times a day isn't for carnal and lustful pleasures. Now I agree. Everything that is taught in Islam is not necessarily based on hedonistic values or ideas. But the moral issue of having intercourse with as many slave women as one desires is still at hand. So having 50 slave women makes you a misguided person. What about having 700 wives and 300 concubines? Does that make a person not a prophet anymore? I'm telling you anything they bring against Islam is either false and a lie or just an emotional argument or can be found in their own books like Prophet Solomon السلام, in their Bible. Nevertheless Solomon held fast to them in love. He had 700 wives of royal birth and 300 concubines. So was Solomon السلام, a false prophet because he had 300 concubines? Of course you don't believe that. And this is my brothers and sisters how we refute these Christians. Using logical fallacies is not the best way to refute Christians as by appealing to the Bible yet again you just committed another Tukul Kwe fallacy. As well you quote the Bible to show that Solomon who you falsely attribute as being a moral standard for Christians has 700 wives. But in the next verse you quoted from, Solomon is actually condemned for having these 700 wives since especially they led him astray. So Solomon's actions are clearly not to be used as a moral standard for Christians to follow. But let's read what Aquinas himself has to say about having slaves. Saif Talk yet again commits another Tuku Kwe fallacy as he justifies Islamic slavery by stating that Aquinas also allowed slavery or some form of it. Nonetheless, one must be careful how you interpret Aquinas' conception of slavery. As Aquinas states in On the Perfection of the Spiritual Life, nothing is so repugnant to human nature as slavery. He got such answer not from the Bible. As the philosopher says is referring to Aristotle, a person who doesn't even know who God is and his attributes. Safe Talk takes issue with Aquinas appealing to Aristotle and not scripture. But there is no issue with this as not every literal form of knowledge comes from scripture. As if Safe Talk was truly familiar with Aquinas, he would know that Aquinas utilizes a natural theology to come to moral conclusions. Of course, natural theology does not run contrary to scripture, as Romans 1 even pushes the use of it in a way. In this case, Aristotle was one of the greatest philosophers to contribute to metaphysics and natural theology. Seif Talk actually commits another fallacy, which is the parts whole fallacy, in regard to Aristotle. As according to Seif Talk, if Aristotle had a false view of God, that therefore the rest of his beliefs and opinions must be false too. This conclusion is a non sequitur that Christianity is influenced by Greek paganism. They use Greek philosophers to explain the religion, not the prophets of God. And that's why you find Christians believing in concepts like the Trinity, which is clear-cut polytheism. Yet again, he commits another part whole fallacy which was just explained. Furthermore, we don't hold any philosopher above scripture or the prophets. Of course, scripture takes priority over philosophy. And his claim about the Trinity being polytheism is just a baseless assertion 
and therefore he commits the baseless assertion fallacy. These Christians have no idea what Jesus taught or preached, let alone what he did in his infancy. For you to claim that the Quran got the story wrong, you need to have the original or eyewitness accounts from the time of the infancy of Jesus but you don't. Notice his claim. He believes that we have no eyewitness accounts for Jesus' childhood. And furthermore, we have no idea what happened during Jesus' childhood. But now look at how he contradicts himself in this clip right after. The only reason the Quran and the Gospel of Thomas may agree on some of the stories of Jesus is because they are true and did happen. Even though he just claimed that we have no eyewitness accounts for Jesus' childhood and don't know what could have happened in the clip just shown, he contradicts himself and states that parts of the infancy Gospel of Thomas are actually true. So what is it? Do we have eyewitness testimony about Jesus' childhood, or do we not? By these statements, he not only commits the inconsistency fallacy, but he also falls back into the baseless assertion fallacy, as he just asserts that the narrative that the Quran plagiarized from the infancy gospel of Thomas is true, but he provides no justification. The oldest complete copy of the New Testament is Codex Sinaiticus and it is dated to the 4th century. You have nothing complete before that. The only reason you reject what the Gospel of Thomas has to say is because it contradicts what you believe. Syph talk must not know much about manuscripts as the Codex Sinaiticus is referring to one of the first complete New Testament collections of manuscripts in the 4th century. But we have hundreds of manuscripts of the entire New Testament that predate the Codex Sinaiticus. And furthermore, historians reject the infancy Gospel of Thomas because it is not based on eyewitness testimony and yet it claims to do so. And it was written a century after any eyewitnesses of Jesus' childhood. Christians reject it because it's not historical. It has nothing to do with it contradicting the New Testament and therefore Saif falls into the straw man fallacy. And if the Quran agreeing with some of the stories in the Gospel of Thomas, it means that it copied from it and is false, then the Bible is also false from quoting from the Book of Enoch. After this clip, Saif Talk argues that the epistle of Jude quoted from or mentioned an account in Enoch, and therefore my argument falls back onto me. Yet in doing so, he commits another Tuku Kwe fallacy. Aquinas argues that Muhammad did not do miracles, or at least any, that can be proven in order to demonstrate the reliability of his claims as a prophet of Allah. Subhanallah, this is supposed to be one of the biggest Christian scholars and philosophers. Question, did Aquinas witness any of the miracles performed by any of the prophets of God? Did Aquinas witness the splitting of the sea by Moses alayhi salam? Of course he didn't. And Subhanallah, his argument works against Christianity and not Islam. Saif talk commits a complete and horrendous straw man of Aquinas' argument, and therefore he commits the straw man fallacy. Aquinas did not say that Muslims in his time saw Muhammad do miracles because the Muslims at his time lived centuries after Muhammad. The same applies to Aquinas as he lived centuries after the prophets in the Old Testament. The point Aquinas is arguing is that Muhammad did no miracles which can be demonstrated historically. You don't need to directly witness something in order for it to historically happen. You can see whether or not there is good historical evidence for a historical event, such as a miracle. Christians can't prove any of the miracles performed by Jesus or any other prophet of God. The only miracle that can be examined today is the Quran. We Muslims claim the Quran is a miracle. So only the miracle of the Quran can be examined today. Except that us Christians can demonstrate the resurrection of Jesus historically. That is why we put our faith in Jesus Christ. My video on the resurrection is linked below. Nonetheless, Saif Talk commits another Tuko Kwe fallacy as he appeals to the fact that he thinks Christians can't demonstrate miracle claims either. This guy without even realizing it just exposed the racism of Aquinas. Let's read what he said again. Again, those who believed in him from the outset were not wise men, practiced in things divine and human, but bestial men who dwelt in the desert. According to this lovely Christian, the companions of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were bestial men. Is this what your loving God taught you? In this clip, Saif Talk makes the weird claim that Aquinas is somehow racist for calling the followers of Muhammad bestial men, 
But this claim that they were a bestial is based on the fact that they were men who followed Muhammad based partially on his lustful teachings. This is not some racist comment, as in the Summa Theologica, Aquinas clearly affirms that all men are made in God's image. Let's refute these claims immediately. He tried to claim Islam spread by the sword. This force of arms and military expeditions made up much of Muhammad's prophethood, and it granted him much power. In Sahih Muslim 1767a, Muhammad is quoted as saying, I will expel the Jews and the Christians from the Arabian Peninsula and will not leave any but Muslim. Before I answer his lack of understanding of this hadith, let us read together what Aquinas has to say about freedom of religion. Saif talk yet again falls into the fallacy of Tukokwe, as instead of refuting the objection, he spins it back on the accuser. Try to claim that Islam spread by the sword and that Prophet Muhammad وسلم, waged many wars. Well, let's read what Aquinas himself has to say about waging war. He then quotes from Aquinas talking about waging wars that are just. But yet again, in doing so, he commits another Tukokwe fallacy. And this is exactly what he was trying to accuse Islam of. He has no problem in waging war to make people accept Christianity, which is the peace he's talking about. The fake peace, the peace of polytheism. And this is again clear-cut hypocrisy. On Aquinas' part, this is not hypocrisy because Aquinas attacked the manner in which early Muslims waged war. He himself believes that wars are sometimes necessary, but Aquinas would not equate the theory of war that he holds to with the wars that early Muslims had. And now the reason why Islam is false is because Prophet Muhammad وسلم, corrupted the commands in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Well, if corrupting the laws of the Old Testament makes you a false prophet, well, Jesus himself is a false prophet because he did change some of the laws of the Old Testament. Yet again, this is another Tukukwe fallacy. He shifts the objection back on the accuser without realizing that the objection still stands upon him. Matthew 5 verse 38 to 39 You have heard that it was said, eye for eye and tooth for tooth. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek also. So according to Aquinas, because Jesus changed and contradicted the laws of the Old Testament, he is therefore a false prophet. Subhanallah, every single argument they bring trying to refute Islam ends up refuting their own religion. This is not Jesus corrupting or contradicting the Old Testament scriptures. Jesus is simply clarifying the moral law of the Old Testament in saying that getting back what is yours does not apply to all situations. So it's a clarification, not a contradiction. And let's test Aquinas himself to see if he's worthy of being listened to. According to Aquinas prayer book, the prayers and hymns of St. Thomas Aquinas, page 21. O most blessed and sweet Virgin Mary, Mother of God filled with all tenderness, Daughter of the Most High King, Lady of the Angels, Mother of all the faithful. On this day, on all the days of my life, I entrust to your merciful heart my body and my soul, all my acts, thoughts, choices, desires, words, deeds, my entire life and death. Saif talk attempts to refute the Catholic understanding of Mary as being polytheistic, but in Roman Catholicism we ask the saints for intercession, as according to the Epistle of James, the prayer of a righteous man availeth much, and the saints are not dead but alive in heaven. But notice how the prayer which he mentioned also states that what Aquinas is asking of Mary will be done through the divine will of Jesus Christ, and not by Mary alone and completely distinct from Jesus. Saif talk looks at her views as polytheism, but this is simply a straw man of the Catholic position, and therefore the final fallacy he commits in the video. In Saif talk's whole response video, he committed over a whopping 18 logical fallacies in his arguments, and these were just the ones that I was able to identify. It is clear and evident that Saif has faulty reasoning, and therefore Aquinas' objections to Islam still stand. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more, please consider liking and subscribing. Also, if you want to support my channel, consider becoming a member. As always, God bless.